Welcome to the first video in the Create With Me series. This week, I wanted to illustrate a rabbit to celebrate the 2023 Lunar New Year. In this video, I'll be walking you through my art process step by step, and hopefully I'm able to teach you a thing or two as well. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to help me reach my goal of hitting 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. I ended up using a variety of mediums for this illustration, which made this project really fun, including a G-nib dip pen with a Tachikawa holder, Platinum Carbon India ink, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White ink, Higgins Black Magic marker, Sakura Pen Touch Gold Calligraphy marker, a Garnet Colored Copic marker, various Micron pens, an 11 by 14 inch Strathmore Smooth Bristol Paper Pad, an iPad with Procreate and Apple Pencil, and a light pad for transferring my sketch onto the Bristol board. I almost always start off my sketches in Procreate on iPad. Whenever I sketch and concept, I want to make sure I am able to do so on a canvas that gives me the freedom to make mistakes and to quickly make corrections. During this stage, I try to give myself just enough details to help guide the drawing on my inking layer. This can also be completed traditionally with sketchbook paper, as long as my sketching and inking layers are different. This makes it so I can minimize the number of pencil and eraser marks on my final illustration. Once I am happy with my digital sketch, I change it to a different color, usually dark red or blue. This is an optional step which I find helps me tell apart the sketch layer from the final layer. Then I send it over to print. My printed sketch is on 8.5 by 11 inch paper, but my final piece will be on 11 by 14 inch Bristol. This works out perfectly since I wanted there to be enough negative space surrounding the composition. Once I'm happy with the size and positioning of the sketch layer, I can use painter's tape or washi tape to secure the sketch layer onto the Bristol layer. Now it's time to start inking. I want to start with the rabbit since it's in the foreground. For this part, I am starting off with my dip pen and Platinum Carbon India ink. This brand of India ink is my favorite as it dries fairly quickly and works well when used with other wet media. I enjoy using the dip pen for most of my ink illustrations since I enjoy the control it gives me to taper between thin and thick lines. Since I'm right-handed, I try to work from upper left to lower right on my composition. That way, my hand isn't at risk to smudge the wet ink. Which has happened to me a lot, by the way. But I have some solutions for that, which I'm excited to share with you in a future video. Another reason why I really love working with the dip pen is that it's great for making textures. I wanted the rabbit's fur texture to create a visual appeal in this piece. I have to be careful as it's easy to get carried away with adding too much texture. Having too much texture can cause the viewer to become overstimulated, which causes focal points and a sense of form to get lost. I usually stick to adding most of my textures in the midtones, since highlights are too overexposed to see texture and shadows are too underexposed to see texture as well. It's also important to create texture that complements the surface shape of the object. To show curvature and depth in the ears, I added a higher density of textures where the ear is most in shadow and a lower density where the ear is closer to the light. Slightly alternating the direction of the fur also helps create a visual interest in the texture and in real life, fur doesn't all face in one direction. Now for the chest. I wanted to make it really fluffy because I think animals with fluffy chests are really adorable. I wanted to represent this in waves, starting with longer fur towards the top and having it gradually get shorter towards the bottom. 
Adding shadows underneath each wave of fur helps give it more form and fluffiness. For the leg and the belly as it gets closer to the ground, I wanted to add a higher density of textures to show that it's receding in the shadows, still making sure that the direction of the fur complements the shape of the form. And of course, you can't forget the fluffy little tail. Here I'm just refining some details. I can also turn off the light box now, since it's no longer needed at this point. Now I feel like the rabbit is more or less done. I'm going to let it dry overnight so that when I work on everything else the next day, I don't have to worry about anything smudging. The following morning, I had a slight change of plans from what I had originally intended to do with my initial sketch. I thought it would look nice to have a black background to show the stars. I took a photo of my rabbit drawing in its current state and once again used Procreate to put together a mock-up of what it would look like. Not bad. Now I'm using a ruler to create my rectangle background and a compass for my moon. When adding geometric shapes into my composition, it's important to me that the shapes are rendered with as much precision as possible. Slight errors in geometric shapes stand out a lot more than it would in organic forms. Whenever I work on ink drawings, I always use a test sheet of Bristol, so I can preview my medium somewhere else before they are permanently applied to my final piece. I knew that I wanted the moon to be red since it symbolizes luck in Chinese culture. However, I wasn't sure which red Copic was best for my drawing. I decided to go with my darkest red, Garnet, so that the tone wouldn't compete with the gold. Although the felt tip gives less coverage than the chisel tip, it gives a smoother, even look when coloring. That and making sure the stroke lines are all in one direction. I find Copic markers very soothing to work with. There's just something about them that makes them so satisfying, don't you agree? Time to block in the background with the Higgins Black Magic marker. I love this marker for blocking out large shapes of black. It's very pigmented, opaque, and it dries quickly, creating a bold, matte look. Yeah, I totally got distracted here. I wanted to make sure I remember to add the silhouettes for the wheat stalks I'm going to add in later, before I started to block out the right side. The gold ink I'm going to use is very opaque, but just in case I wanted to make sure it had a dark background underneath so the gold can look its best. Alright, back to it. Now it's time for the gold. Honestly, this was the part I was looking forward to the most. It took me a while to find a gold medium that gave me that shiny and opaque look I was searching for. A lot of what I used to work with ended up looking too streaky or washed out. I was actually worried that with the amount of gold ink I was planning to use in this drawing that I would see a little bit of streakiness. But to my surprise, everything came out a lot smoother than I expected. The silhouettes also ended up being very strong. I really enjoyed working with the alternating thin and thick curves towards the bottom. Just like the fur, I wanted to make sure, even though the wheat socks were leaning left, that there were a few slightly going in the opposite direction to create visual interest. I wanted to add some texture or pattern to the moon since it was plain, but I didn't want it to compete with the texture of the rabbit. So I decided to stick with something simple, some curvy lines that have varying degrees of thickness while still giving it a planetary yet mystical look. It also complements the curvature of the wheat stalks that I did earlier. Ideally, I wanted to use a brush pen for this look, but I do have a felt micron that worked out just fine. I added some thinner curves with a smaller micron for contrast. Now it's time for the white ink. I used Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink as it's opaque and I can use it to make thin lines and dots with my dip pen. At this stage, I'm adding back the eyelashes and the whiskers that I initially covered with a black marker. 
and the stars as well. I wanted to make a Milky Way effect, where groups of stars will band together in one place. This reminds me of clear, dark skies whenever I go camping in the desert. A little signature on the bottom, the year, and I'm all done. I was really happy with how this came out and I had a ton of fun making it. This piece, as well as many other of my originals, is currently for sale to go to a good home. All of my original work is UV protected and comes with a certificate of authenticity. If you want to check out some more of my work, including prints, stickers, and screen printed apparel, feel free to check out my store at joycerainbowart.com, as well as following me on social media to receive the latest updates with my work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful new year filled with joy and good fortune. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos as well.